is true love. I think this happens every day. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most rewatched scenes in romance movies. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Are you disappointed that it's me? No. Hi. There's no one like you, Cody. For this list, we'll only be looking at romantic comedies and excluding romantic dramas. So you won't see scenes from Titanic or The Notebook here. We're also excluding animated films. Which moments can you watch over and over again? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. The Photo Booth – Amélie Set in Paris, Amélie is a unique romantic comedy that strays from the standard Hollywood formula. <laughs> The protagonist is Amélie Poulain, a young French woman who devotes her life to bringing happiness to others after a particular discovery. One day in her apartment, she finds a box of childhood memorabilia from one of the flat's former residents. She manages to track down the boy, now a grown man, and anonymously returns his possessions to him. En une seconde, tout revient à la mémoire de Brotodo. His emotional response is evocative, and it prompts Amélie to continue spreading joy throughout the rest of the film. Tout est parfait en cet instant. La douceur de la lumière, ce petit parfum dans l'air, la rumeur tranquille de la ville. Elle inspire profondément, et la vie lui paraît alors si simple et si limpide qu'un élan d'amour, comme un désir d'aider l'humanité entière, la submerge tout à coup. Number 19, The Ikea Date, 500 Days of Summer. 500 Days of Summer is an unconventional romantic comedy in that the viewer knows from the very beginning that the relationship it depicts is not going to work out. Regardless, it's fun to be along for the ride. One of the sweetest moments comes when Tom and Summer have a dreamy date at an IKEA store, making furniture shopping look like the most romantic thing in the world. The sink's broken. Well, that's okay because that's why we bought a home with two kitchens. You're so smart. I'll race you to the bedroom. The way they play act living in the display rooms is charming, and has doubtless inspired many couples to do the same since. This is fun. You're fun. Thanks. Whenever we go to Ikea, we seem to be surrounded by pushy shoppers and screaming children. Number 18. Heckling, The Big Sick in The Big Sick, which is based on the real-life love story between writer Kumail Nanjiani and his wife Emily Gordon, the main couple has one hell of a meet-cute. Is Pakistan in the house? Woo! Really? You're not from Pakistan. I would have noticed you. Protagonist Kumail is an aspiring stand-up comedian, and he approaches a woman after one of his sets who heckled him while he was performing. I didn't heckle you. I just woohooed you. It's Supportive. Okay, that's a common misconception. Uh -huh. like yelling anything at a comedian is considered heckling. Heckling doesn't have to be negative. His definition of heckling may not match up with hers, but the two hit it off anyway. While this scene is adorable, it all comes full circle by the end of the movie when Emily turns up at one of his shows and heckles him all over again. And what brings you to New York? Here to see someone. And, um, have you seen him or her? I mean, I don't... I don't know what your deal is, but... Yeah, I've seen him. Number 17. Choose Me, My Best Friend's Wedding. It's interesting to have a rom-com protagonist who you may or may not root for. This is by far the dumbest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Uh, so dumb, in fact, uh, that I can't. Oh, but I'm gonna. But that's the case in My Best Friend's Wedding, where Julia Roberts' character Jules is trying to win the affections of her longtime bestie Michael, despite the fact that he's about to be married. This is my whole life's happiness. 
I have to be ruthless. On what was supposed to be their wedding day, Jules makes one last desperate attempt to make Michael choose her, giving an impassioned speech and kissing him. Choose me. Marry me. Let me make you happy. <sighs> that sounds like three favors, doesn't it? She may not get the guy, but everyone got the ending they needed, and this scene has gone down in movie history as one of the best in the genre. Number 16. Thriller, 13 Going on 30 Pretty much every moment of 13 Going on 30 is a delight, but there's none more iconic than the thriller dance scene. Jenna Rink is a 13-year-old in a grown woman's body who finds herself trying to revive a failing work party. A dud, a flop, a zero, on a scale of 1 to 10. Maybe if somebody played something other than this, something with a melody. She puts on Michael Jackson's mega hit and hits the dance floor, nailing all the moves. At first, it seems like she's about to be ridiculed, but eventually everyone joins in. It's a fun and uplifting scene that never fails to pump us up, no matter how many times we watch it. I you. Number 15. Wesley and Buttercup Reunite – The Princess Bride in The Princess Bride, lovers Wesley and Buttercup are separated after Wesley leaves to make a fortune so that he can be a worthy husband to her. Buttercup believes that her love has been killed by the dread pirate Roberts when he does not return. The two eventually meet again, but she believes him to be the dread pirate Roberts. I know who you are. Your cruelty reveals everything. You're the dread pirate Roberts. Admit it! With pride. Wesley plays up his assumed role, but when Buttercup pushes him down a hill, he utters his iconic catchphrase, as you wish, and she realizes who he really is. You can die too for all I care! Oh. As you wish! Oh, my sweet Wesley, what have I done? She tumbles down after him in a moment that is simultaneously sweet and hilarious. Can you move at all? Move? You're alive. If you want, I can fly. Number 14. Speaking English and Portuguese in France. Love Actually. There are plenty of cute moments in this holiday-themed rom-com, but our hearts always swell when we watch this one. Aurelia and Jamie meet when he hires her to be his housekeeper, and the two struggle to communicate because they don't speak the same language. They slowly develop feelings for one another, however. It's my favorite time of day. Driving you. After he goes back home, Jamie ends up learning Portuguese. Then he goes back to track Aurelia down in her hometown in France to profess his love and propose marriage to her. Hey, claro que eu pensar que tu dizes na. Mas é Natal, é. é só queria saber. It turns out she's been practicing her English, and the two get engaged with seemingly the entire town bearing witness. You learned English? Just in cases. Number 13. The Plane Proposal – Crazy Rich Asians Rachel Chu, will you marry me? <laughs> and make me the happiest man in this world. Crazy Rich Asians is one of the most popular romantic comedies to be released in recent years, taking the genre's traditional formula and giving viewers a unique new setting to experience. Say, I'm Rachel. It's like the Asian bachelor. Much of the plot revolves around Rachel's issues with Nick's family, particularly his controlling mother. You will never be enough. By the film's climax, Rachel has decided to head back to America without Nick, after deciding to prioritize letting Nick have a positive relationship with his family. I just love Nick so much. I don't want him to lose his mom again. 
but Nick manages to catch her on the plane and proposes with his mother's ring, showing that she has finally decided to approve of their union. Number 12, The Home Swap, The Holiday. By myself at Christmas. <laughs> By myself depressed at Christmas. The Holiday may be a Christmas movie, but it can be enjoyed year round. Hands down, the highlight of the film comes at the beginning when Iris and Amanda make the decision to swap houses for the holiday season. We switch houses, cars, everything. I haven't done it before, but friends of mine have. Where are you? <sighs> Please say somewhere far away. LA. Seeing both of their enthusiasm build gets the audience amped up for what's to come, and witnessing the two women's growing rapport is entertaining. Are there any men in your town? <laughs> Honestly? We also can't get enough of watching Iris's reaction when she first explores Amanda's LA mansion, running around to each room like an excited little kid. Number 11, You're the One That I Want, Grease. In Grease, Sandy and Danny have a tumultuous relationship after meeting at the beach and finding themselves at the same school come fall. You're a fake and a phony and I wish I'd never laid eyes on you. Whoa. After going through plenty of ups and downs, they're finally ready to come together by the film's conclusion. Sandy? Tell me about it, Stan. Seeing Sandy and Danny transform to be together is pretty iconic. And while the focus is usually put on Sandy's shocking makeover, it's important to remember that Danny put on a preppy outfit to impress her too. This is the happy ending that we'd been waiting for. Number 10, Boombox Serenade, Say Anything. She broke up with me. What do I do? Can she come back? How can I get her back? I can't. Can't get her to talk to me. This is one of the most iconic moments in rom-com history for a reason. The classic 80s movie is about a slacker, Lloyd Dobler, who falls for the class valedictorian, Diane Court. I just can't have any social life right now. Don't worry about it. We're just having coffee. We'll be antisocial. Be friends? Yeah. Potential. There are plenty of things that come between them, but Lloyd makes an attempt at a grand romantic gesture. He shows up at the break of dawn outside Diane's bedroom window, blasting Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes on his boombox. Lloyd standing there with a plaintive look in his eyes has become one of the most memorable images in all of film history. Number 9, The Empire State Building, Sleepless in Seattle. After his wife passes away, Sam's young son Jonah calls into a radio station to make his story public. But something must be missing if Jonah still feels that you're under a cloud. And just a few questions. Are you sleeping at night? He doesn't sleep at all. How do you know that? I live here, Dad. Women from all over the nation become enamored with Sam including Baltimore reporter Annie. Yeah, it's, it's just tough this, this time of year. I mean, any kid needs a mother. Could it be that you need someone just as much as Jonah does? Yes. Inspired by an affair to remember, Annie suggests that they meet at the top of the Empire State Building on Valentine's Day. A series of mishaps and near meetings occur, but finally the two end up at the top of the emblematic building on the night in question. It's certainly unconventional to have a romance movie where the two leads essentially don't meet until the very end, but that's what makes this moment all the more special. Shall we? Number 8, Getting to Know Cher Horowitz, Clueless. Clueless is a favorite for many in the teen movie genre, and it features one of the most memorable and rewatchable openings of all time. 
The introductory montage introduces us to Cher and her lavish life in Los Angeles. Okay, you're probably going, is this like an Oxima commercial or what? But seriously, I actually have a way normal life for a teenage girl. Though she presents herself as an average teenager in her voiceover, it's clear that she's anything but. Any fashionista will love the glimpse into Cher's closet and the computer technology that somehow puts together outfits for her. 25 years later, and we still don't have one of these in our rooms. Do you prefer fashion victim or ensemble challenge? Ah. Number 7. I'm Just a Girl Speech, Notting Hill. In Notting Hill, Julia Roberts plays a celebrity superstar named Anna Scott, and Hugh Grant plays a modest bookstore owner living in London named Will. I live in Notting Hill, you live in Beverly Hills. Everyone in the world knows who you are. My mother has trouble remembering my name. While Will spends most of the movie feeling intimidated by Anna, by the end it's her who's pleading for him to accept her and consider them being together. I have to go away today, but I wondered if I didn't, whether you might let me see you a little, or a lot, maybe. She attempts to humanize celebrities, explaining that at her core, she's just like everyone else. I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy, asking him to love her. Her speech has gone down in rom-com history as one of the best and is still evocative and relevant today. Number 6. The Hot Tub Kiss To All the Boys I've Loved Before To All the Boys I've Loved Before is one of the most beloved teen movies to be released in recent years, and the chemistry between shy and quiet Lara Jean and popular jock Peter is one of the reasons it was so well received. Yeah, I wanted to sit next to you, Lara Jean. I even packed the snacks. I asked Kitty where to find those, uh, those yogurt drinks you like so much. The Korean grocery store is all the way across town. Yeah, I know. Despite the fact that their relationship is fake for much of the movie, their hot tub kiss on the school ski trip is the moment it gets very real. There's no one like you, Cody. This is the scene in which they finally admit their feelings for one another, and we could watch it again and again. Good night. Number 5. Mark's Confession, Bridget Jones's Diary In Bridget Jones's Diary, it seems like Bridget and Mark Darcy couldn't be more different. Mother, I do not need a blind date, particularly not with some verbally incontinent spinster who smokes like a chimney, drinks like a fish, and dresses like her mother. Yummy. He's an uptight lawyer, and she's a somewhat crass and bumbling singleton who doesn't seem to have her life together. She feels judged by him, but their dynamic shifts partway through the film when Mark confronts Bridget and tells her that, despite all of her flaws, he likes her just as she is. I like you. Very much. Uh, apart from the smoking, and the drinking, and the vulgar mother, and the verbal diarrhea. No, I like you very much. Just as you are. It's a simple speech, but one that's relatable for many who wish they could be accepted without someone wanting them to change. Number 4. Ferris Wheel Kiss – Love, Simon Love, Simon broke down barriers by becoming the first film from a major studio to focus on a gay teen romance. In many ways, this movie feels just like a traditional romantic comedy, showing that queer love stories aren't all that different from the ones we're used to seeing in mainstream films. The ending of the story has Simon finally meeting the guy he's been chatting with anonymously online for so long. I didn't think you'd come. Me neither. Until I was walking towards you, I, I didn't think I had it in me. While waiting on the Ferris wheel for his secret pen pal to reveal himself, it seems like he's never gonna show up. But when Bram sits beside him and they eventually kiss, it's a moment that feels both familiar and revolutionary. <laughs> Number 3. Can't Take My Eyes Off You – 10 Things I Hate About You Look, you embarrass the girl. Sacrifice yourself on the altar of dignity and even the score. Ten Things I Hate About You tops many lists of the best teen movies of all time, and Heath Ledger's performance as Bad Boy Patrick is one of the reasons it's so beloved. You're just too good to be true. 
Can't take my eyes off of you. In this scene, he serenades Cat with a rendition of Can't Take My Eyes Off You on their school's bleachers. I love you, baby. And if it's quite all right, I need you, baby. To warm the lonely night, I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say. Cat isn't exactly the type of girl who you'd think would appreciate a showy gesture like this but she can't help but be charmed by him. The fact that Ledger is no longer with us makes watching this scene bittersweet, but seeing the joyful performance is a reminder of his infectious energy. Number 2. Hello, Jerry Maguire How does one scene feature not one, but two iconic rom-com lines? You complete me. Jerry Maguire is an interesting film in that romance isn't the only focus, but Jerry's relationship with Dorothy is the thing that keeps us coming back for more. I love him for the, for the man he wants to be, and I love him for the man that he almost is. Though their relationship takes a turn for the worse, by the film's end, they find their way back together, with Jerry telling Dorothy that she completes him, and Dorothy uttering this much-quoted line. You had me at hello. <laughs> Hello. It's a romantic scene that shows that a love story is never really over when both people still love each other. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. New Year's Eve – When Harry Met Sally one of the most hilarious rom-com moments of all time has to be Sally's explosive faking it scene in Katz's Delicatessen. Yes! Oh! 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 Oh, God! Oh! While we could watch that over and over again, we also love the heartwarming romantic conclusion of When Harry Met Sally. I'm sorry, Harry. I know it's New Year's Eve. I know you're feeling lonely, but you just can't show up here, tell me you love me, and expect that to make everything all right. It doesn't work this way. This love story tells of a couple whose timing never seems to be quite right throughout decades of friendship. In the end, though, they realize that the person for them was right in front of them all along. And it's not because I'm lonely, and it's not because it's New Year's Eve. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. Harry makes an impassioned speech on New Year's Eve, telling Sally that he loves her partly because of her unique quirks, and we are here for it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.